right, so today we are going to make a leather, which was a braided bracelet. So I just have some scrap pieces of leather that I got um, somewhere. You can take them from anything, though, if you have an old leather coat that has some damage, uh, a purse that's genuine leather, um, you know, anything. You can actually buy remnants uh, like online if from you know, manufacturers of different things. Um, they sell the scrap or the remnants, and sometimes you can buy them by the pound, so you get like three pounds or whatever it is. Um, but it doesn't always guarantee you um, big pieces. So this one here, I just have this little teeny tiny piece, you know, like what it, what would you do that with that? But it's actually just wide enough to make a bracelet. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is, um, it's a little bit, it's not quite straight, but I'm, I'm not really worried about it since I'm going to braid it. Um, so I'm actually just going to make this, um, into the bracelet that it is. I do have this, um, I think it's like a, like a crayon of some kind, like a wax crayon or something like that. You can actually just wipe that off. Um, it doesn't really, it doesn't, it actually comes off pretty easily. Um, uh, but I'm just, I'm just going to leave it for right this second and I'll wipe it off when I'm done. So one thing to keep in mind about leather, especially leather that's thinner like this, something that you would use for like a jacket or a, a bag or something to that effect, is it can be pretty thin. This is a pretty thin, um, piece of, of, of leather here. So as of that, you know, as with that, it will stretch. So if you yank on this too hard or if you pull on the corners, it'll actually stretch. Uh, and there's no way to get it back. So kind of just like shoes when you when you've stretched them out too far or they've stretched out a lot, you can't make them go go back even if you get them wet. So do be aware of that. You don't want to yank too hard. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna cut it off down here just so I don't have this huge piece. I'm gonna save that extra piece though because you can make some earrings or something like that. So anyway, um, the size that I like for the bracelets that I've tried um, is about an inch and a half or so. Um, you don't have to go quite that large if you don't want to. I might go a little bit skinnier because when you do the inch and a half, depending on how long of a piece you have, you have to do it four times. And I'll explain that when I get that far. But sometimes with the thicker, with the thicker or the wider um, strands, it can be pretty hard to braid it, especially at the bottom. So maybe for the first time, um, for the first one that you make, you should start it a little bit thinner, maybe like an inch or something to that effect. Uh, and try it that way. So we're actually going to go a little bit less than an inch. So you can see that I have this wobbly side here, but this side over here is pretty straight. So I'm actually going to line up the straight side and then um, cut the wobbly side off. So you need to have a ruler that has a metal edge. It can just be a regular school ruler or if you have an actual um, like metal ruler. And then you need an uh, exacto knife or some kind of a, a, a craft knife. It has to be pretty sharp. Mine is not very sharp, so we're going to see how well this goes. The difference will be is that if you don't have a sharp knife, is you're not going to get this clean look over here where there's not a lot of fraying. You're going to get, um, I don't have any right now, but like something that has more of a frayed edge on it. As you can see, like it has like these little hairs and stuff. Uh, it'll just give you a little bit more of a frayed edge for that. So you can always trim that off later, but it's up to you. So as you can see, the ruler here itself is about an inch and a quarter. So you have about an inch and then a little bit more. So I'm actually just going to go with that width. I'm going to line it up over here. And then have the metal edge on the side that I'm cutting. I do have to stand up for this. This one's going to move my chair. All right, so you have to put a lot of pressure on when you're cutting leather. Um, you can certainly just draw it and then cut it with your scissors. But again, you're not going to get a very straight cut with that one. So when I cut leather, I like to come in a little bit and push down with my knife. Like I've pushed all the way through the uh, leather at this point. And now I'm gonna push extremely hard on the ruler and on the craft knife. Sometimes when you get these skinnier edges, it likes to wiggle in. So make sure that that does not happen. If you kind of see it wiggling in, stop a little bit and then kind of pull it out again. And then you also can kind of tug it a little bit to see where it has come out, or excuse me, cut through, excuse me. So that all looks pretty good. So I'm going to slide my hand down. You're going to work in little sections. Make sure you don't move it and you apply a lot of pressure. And you should be able to cut it right off. So then I just get that little tail at the very end. The reason I don't start all the way on the end is if you start up here and you start to cut it, kind of like when you're cutting brownies, it'll all just go, it'll smush down before it goes in. So I like to just um, kind of come in a little bit and then cut that little tail off. So just like that. Okay, so now I'm not going to move the leather. I'm going to switch my board. And this is a self-healing mat. Um, this is just a really small one. You can use any size that you have. 
Um, if you don't have a self-healing mat, you can just use a, maybe a piece of cardboard um, or you know your dad's workbench if he says it's fine, uh, something like that. So you just want to cut those little tails off. I do have this little bump here, but it really just doesn't matter. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my uh, cutting, my self-healing mat. I'm not going to move the leather at all. And I'm going to try and cut off just this little bit. So I'm going to use the marks that are on my on my uh, mat here to get it to line up nicely. All right, so oops, sorry, excuse me. So again, I'm going to come in just a little bit, push all the way down, and I'm going to use slow, even pressure and cut off this edge that has this like grease marker on it. I'm assuming it's probably like a car manufacturer or somebody that drew that, but who knows. So I'm going to move my hands down. And again, I'm making sure that my knife is all the way along this, this uh, metal edge. And then I'm just going to go back up that top piece. So now, I have a very nice, very straight piece of leather here with no marks on it. So now I'm going to divide it up. So I'm actually going to flip it over at this point because it doesn't really matter now that it's straight. Uh, I'm just going to line it up on my mat just because that's what I do. And I'm actually going to just use a Sharpie to make my marks. This is on the back side, obviously. You can see I flipped it over. And I have, let's see what I actually ended up with. I have a little less than an inch and a quarter. So I'm just going to do an eighth on each side. So see I have this little eighth inch mark. That way I have, like, here, I'll do it this way so you can see it. No, nope, I'm going to do it this way. So there's an eighth above and an eighth below. So here's my inch and my inch, and I have an eighth above and an eighth below. Okay, so here's the middle. So this is one of those things that you have to just kind of do the math on. It doesn't really matter exactly where you have it. You just want them to be somewhat even. So if I do that, I'm going to make my mark here. So I'm going to do mine at uh, one, two, let's see. It's a little more than six. So it's, it's like six ticks in from the one inch mark. And like that. So that looks pretty good. The one in the middle is a little bit smaller um, than the ones on the outside, but again, you're not really going to see that. So if you want to do the even, you know, really easy math, you can just make it one inch or one and a half or whatever else that you want to do. All right, that looks good. So I'm gonna move my Sharpie. And again, I'm gonna cut this. Uh, I'm gonna cut it from the back side, obviously. I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife here. Now you wanna leave, um, actually, I forgot to talk to you about the length. That's what I forgot to do. So um, in order to figure out the length that you want, you need to have a flexible, a flexible ruler of some kind, or if you don't have this, you can use a piece of string. So you can just use a piece of string, put it on your wrist or whoever's wrist it is that they are, you know, that you're making this for. You don't want to measure right on the wrist because most people don't wear bracelets right on the wrist, you know, bends and things like that. So you want to go back about an inch or so, and then this part can be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, so you have to find the right way to do it when you have only yourself to help you hold it. So you just put it on and you gently, very gently lay it across your wrist. So it'll show you that my wrist is um, like six and three quarter inches. I obviously don't want it to be that tight. Um, so you can make it so that it's seven inches um, or something like that. It's going to hang right about that size. That looks good if I can move my wrist in there very nicely. So I'm going to go with the seven inch mark. So you start with your fit size, which for me is seven inches. I'm going to add one inch for the snap overlay. And then that gives me a total of eight inches. That will be my finished length. We're going to multiply that by 1.3 for a total for me of 10.4 inches. That is the cut size of the leather. Okay, so again, I have my my cutting mat here. Here's zero, and you can see I have marks on the side. So I have zero here. I'm straight on the sides here. I'm gonna turn my mat, get this stuff out of the way, I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna turn my mat and I'm gonna find 10 and a half. So that's, here's my 10 mark, and then my half is obviously right in between. So I'm going to cut mine 
just a smidge, and I do mean a smidge, low to and a half. Put a lot of pressure on it, kind of cut through, and then start moving your knife. This comes off. I probably won't save that little teeny tiny piece, but it's up to you. All right, now I can start cutting. So now what you want to do is you want to leave an inch of space. You're not going to cut into this section. You want to have about an inch overlap so that you can get your snaps in here. So if you have really, really tiny snaps, um, or if you're doing a lacing type of thing where you're putting eyelets on the edge, you don't need to save an inch. But if you're just going to do a standard snap, you want to leave a, a, about an inch overlap where you don't have it braided. So obviously I'm at the half inch mark here, so I'm going to stop cutting it or start cutting at the half inch mark here. Put a mark on there so you can see kind of where it's supposed to start and stop. There you go. And then obviously down here, I'm going to stop right when I get to that. So I'm going to line up these two sides on the metal edge. Make sure that I can just see them. Push down, and then I'm going to kind of like jab through to get all the way through. I'm going to watch my inch mark and I'm going to stop right there. So you can see that it's cut all the way through. That's great. And then I'm just going to move my ruler over to the next set. I tend to get winded when I do this because I hold my breath while I'm cutting it. So anyway, I'm going to do this next one here. I'm going to jab all the way down to the cutting mat to start. Oops, I'm actually on the middle. There we go. And it really does help if you have a very sharp knife. Like I said, mine is not very sharp, so I haven't replaced it in a while. So it's one of those things where you work smarter, not harder type of things, but it is what it is for today. So now we have our three strands and then our area for the snaps. So I'm done with the, meat, the mat. I'm going to get that out of here. And don't brush the crumbs on the floor if your mom is watching. Wait until she leaves. Just kidding. So you're going to take just regular old masking tape or duct tape. If you're putting it on a nice table, I would not recommend duct tape. Um, but if you're just going to do it on, you know, masking tape is fine. Uh, so how you're going to do is you're going to tape one side. It doesn't matter which side because they're all the same. Get this side over here. And this is, um, there's only one tricky part to it. Um, and that's holding the strands where you can see what you're doing. So you have to do the right, left, right. And then you have to go left, right, left. That's one set. So you have to do it an even amount. So if you go right, you have to go left. And then if you go right, work right again, you have to work left again. Otherwise, it won't untwist straight at the end. So keep that in mind. Actually, I'm going to move this over a little bit just so I'm on the video a little better. All right. So what I mean by that, and again, you don't want to yank on these strings because especially now that they're thinner, if you pull too hard on here, you're going to really overstretch it. So be careful with that. Um, so what I mean is if you don't know how to braid, I always start right over the middle and then I bring the left over that one. So it's like an over under thing. So you go over this one, under the next one. Then this one goes over and then under. So that's how it is. If you don't know how to braid, I recommend that you find a child with long hair that you know or um, some ribbon or something like that and just practice that be before you get to this. Or maybe somebody who can braid can help you if you don't know. So I'm going to start on the right for the video. It's probably going to show you on the left, but you're going to start on the right side, your right side. You're going to pull it, pull it over. You don't want this to twist too bad and you don't want to yank it, but you want to pull it over the middle and then do that. So that's what I mean by right. So right over middle, left over middle, and then right one more time. That's considered like a half of a set. So now you have this gap here where your fingers are. So it went right, left, right. So you should have three lines there. You're going to take your piece and you're going to twist it. So here's the front of my leather. I'm just going to twist it through. I'm not going to flip it over or do anything else like that. I'm just going to take it how it's laying, flip it through, and pull it out. So it's going to get all twisted down here. It's going to look like it's in knots. But just watch what happens. So now I'm going to work my, the top strand here is my left strand. So I'm going to go left over middle, right 
over middle and left over middle and I'm going to stop and then this oops it just did it on its own this is how my end piece is and I have this big hole on the left I'm going to put it right back through there and now you can see that it is straight so you're going to do that again so that's what I mean by one set you have to do left right left flip it and then left right left flip it Otherwise, and you have to be able to do them in even sets. You can't do like one more side and then leave it because this end piece will still be twisted if you do that. So you have to work and it has to be a set. Okay. So now I'm back on the right. I'm going to go right over middle, left over middle, right over middle. It does get tricky towards this end piece uh, when you get to the bottom because it wants to flip on its own. So just flip it through. And then you're going to go uh, left. And I have had it sometimes where it flipped on its own and I didn't notice it. And I couldn't get it. I had to like basically take the braid out and do it again. So just do your very, very best. And now, look at that, it's straight. So now I know that I'm on track. These here look really, really good. I have to be able to try and get two more sets down here. So this part down here is where it gets tricky. Again, you don't want to pull too hard because that's going to stretch your leather out. It's going to be really, really big by the time you're done. So I'll show you how to fix that. Um, once we get to the bottom to see how we line up here. So I'm going to go right over middle, left over middle, right over middle. And this is where it gets hard because this one piece wants to try and get through there all on its own. So I pulled that through. And I'm going to try and do it. Let's see if I can. Left over middle, right over middle, and left over middle. And I have this little teeny hole just enough to flip it through okay so now you can see I have kind of this bigger section at the bottom this is where I'm going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to just kind of work it out so that it's not uh, so tight in the middle and then nothing down here so I'll fast forward this part so you don't have to like sit here and watch me do it in real time Okay, I think that looks really good. So there's my braid. And again, once you wear it, um, you know, this piece here is a little bit a little bit uh, tighter than the rest of them. As you wear it, it'll pull around and it'll kind of twist around and stuff like that. So uh, it might be something that will fix itself. Otherwise, you just keep playing with it until you get it how you want it. Because when you're trying to work with something flat that's meant to be rounded, it's going to look different when it's actually curled into the bracelet than when it's laying flat on your table. So try not to be too concerned. You just want to make sure that it's not super tight in one area and really loose in another area or turning or flipping or anything like that. So as you can see, this this is probably like, a, oh yeah, let's actually measure it. This is a little bit less than a half inch strand. Um, if you work with wider ones, the thick, the wider strands, they do look really, really cool. Um, but it actually becomes a little bit more tricky to braid it. Um, so you can, this is a three strand braid. Obviously we had three strands. You can do five, seven, nine, however many you want. Obviously the strands get diff, uh, a little bit um, thinner as you go, as you add more strands, but it works the same way. So it's right over left. So you go over, under, over, under, over, over, under, over, under, over. So it's, it's the same kind of things. There's lots of videos um, on how to do that, but I'm not going to show you that. I can't do it on bracelets. I've only been able to do it with hair. So you never know. So now I'm going to take this off and we're going to get our snaps on. So here's our bracelet. Looks really nice. Um, we'll trim the ends off at the end. That way you can see kind of how it's going to look. Oops, I want this one. So the mat that I use for putting the holes in is actually just a standard uh, really hard acrylic cutting board. Um, if you have a piece of granite, sorry, I bumped the video. Uh, if you have a piece of granite or something like that, uh, you start, or a piece of, you know, a really hard firm wood, you could use that as well. Uh, you just don't want to do it on your table. Obviously, it's going to put holes in it. And if you use something that's softer like this mat, it doesn't always go through. Um, so I actually have a set. Here, let me move some of these things out of the way. I actually got a snap set. Um, and I recommend that you get the snap set. But you have there's one thing that you have to watch. Um, is when you use the the... The pieces aren't good. You don't want them to be super, super small. Sometimes you can buy, you buy some and the actual piece that you hold in your hand is only like an inch tall. Obviously you don't want that. So you want to make sure that it's a good several inches so that you can get your hand in there and hit the top of this without hitting your hand 
uh, or anything like that. They do make some that are even longer than that. So just make sure that you're watching um, what set you get. So this is a snap set. Um, and there's not really very good instructions that come with it, but you need four pieces. So I'll move them up here um, so you can see what they are. So there is the snap itself, which is the finished piece. There's that piece. And then there's this little pokey piece that has kind of a longer um, little lip on it or little tongue on it. And then there's the actual snap piece that receives the, the male part here. And then there's this little teeny tiny one. So this, these two here are basically the same, um, but one is longer than the other. So you'll need all of those. Okay, let's see if I can remember what order they go in here. All right, so what you have to do first is, not every set, you have to make sure that it comes with some kind of a hole cutter. Um, if, they do, if it doesn't come with that, you can actually buy um, the whole set yourself. It's just the hollow punch set. Um, you can get, these come in different sizes and things like that. There should be one that comes with it though. So just make sure. So you want to use, this is the front, my, my leather, leather is face up. I'm going to find just kind of the middle of this area. You don't have, you just eyeball it. You can certainly measure it if you want to, but I'm not really a measuring kind of girl. So this part's going to get a little loud. I have just used a regular, regular hammer. You can use a wooden mallet or a, a really firm rubber mallet or plastic mallet, whatever you have. Um, just make sure that you have something hard to go on. So then you're going to pound it really, really hard. It actually will go through your cutting board, so I recommend that you don't use a cutting board that you want to keep. So as you can see, my little hole is here. And that's the size, This because this one came with the set, so that's specifically the size that I need for these types of snaps. I'm going to move these over here. So I'm going to put the fancy side of my snap face down, because this is again the top of my leather. I'm going to do it face down, and I'm going to flip it over. And then I'm going to get the back side of the snap. That's the fancy side of the snap. Like the part where you, you know the, the piece will go into. And that goes right on the top. It just sits right in there. I don't know how well you can see it. I'll see if I can lift it up so you can see it. It kind of sticks out like that. You see the little piece from the, the center piece there? That's the piece we're going to hammer down. So. This little piece, this little spacer thing, is actually not just a piece of junk. This is the anvil. So you put that underneath. Now, I will tell you that if you if you have something fancy on the back, um, it will scratch on here. So you can put a piece of leather that you have, like an extra piece or a piece of, even a piece of tape will usually stop that from happening. Um, and you can go that way. So mine came with two different pieces. I'm not going to go into detail, but you can see that the end of this is a little bit thicker. So there's two size snaps. So you just have to be careful if you have more than one size snap. You have to just watch which one because this one won't fit into the smaller size. It won't do a good job. So this one here will be more what I want to use. So you're going to take this little teeny point, tiny point right here and you're going to put that inside of the little um, opening on there. And you're going to hammer down. And when you hammer it down, you want to make sure everything's lined up obviously before you do it. As you hammer, you want to kind of roll this piece just a little bit. Just a little teeny bit as you're hammering. So toot, 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 toot. And what that will do is it will make sure that as the metal splits, it's going to curve all the way around and it's going to get a nice even uh, grab on the piece below it. Try it one more time. It doesn't look like it worked very well. And it's probably because I had the piece of leather under there. There we go. One more time. I see a spot that I missed. Looks good. So I don't know if you can see it in there now. The inside piece is flat. And it's all, uh, it's basically grabbed on. But as you can see on the back, it has a little bit of a scratch on it from the anvil. So maybe not using a piece of leather, you could just put a piece of tape across it. And it will just keep that leather, um, or that piece from hit, not hitting that, you know, metal on metal. Alright, so now here we're going to flip it back to the top. So that we have it working in the same direction. And I'm going to get my nail, my hole maker here. I'm going to find the middle section of this area here. This is the other end. Find the middle, and then I'm going to hammer that again really hard. 
and that's to go through the lever. Obviously, the piece, the pieces get stuck up in here, but as it gets full, they kind of just pop out the side. So don't worry about digging those out. So now you're going to take the pieces um, for the other side. You're going to use the two the two little hat pieces. Um, so you're going to use the longer one, and then you have the shorter one. The shorter one is actually the top of the snap that goes into this section. So you can always make sure that you have it the right direction where you have this here. You're going to curl it, and then this piece is going to go on the top like that. So you can kind of see which way you're supposed to do it. So this piece here, the one the piece that has the longer the longer nub on it, goes from the back, from the from the wrong side of the leather out to the front. So it sticks out like that. And again, you can make sure that you have it right. That's going to go into the snap like that. So I'm going to flip it back over actually. So you have that piece there, and then you're going to take the one that has the little the little teeny tiny nub, and you're going to put that right on top. So it sits right on top of there. Actually, I forgot to put my anvil underneath it, so let's do that first. Or do that now, I should say. And then there's another piece that came come with comes with the set. So these here, with the pointy piece and this piece that sticks out, are for the actual finished snap side. So it reaches down in there and bends the metal that way. This one here has a little piece here, a little hole in it, that fits right over the top of the hat. So you're going to put it on something like that. So it fits right over the top of the hat. Okay. Again, this is on the anvil, and I'm going to smash it down real hard. Make sure it's not loose. Everything looks nice and tight. All right, so now we can see that it's going to line up correctly. The fabric that I need is, or excuse me, the, the leather uh, is on the outside, and everything is perfect in that regard. And it snaps. Hooray! All right, so now you can finish the ends. This is the end of the project. You can finish the ends here. You can leave them straight. You can do any kind of detail that you'd like. I just like to round them off a little bit. Um, you can have them come to a point, whatever it is that you want. I do take my time when I'm cutting leather because obviously it stretches a little bit. So I want to make sure that I'm pulling or anything like that. So now I have this nice little rounded section, just like that. And I'm going to do that to the other side and then we are all set. So again, you can do something decorative. There's lots of different ways that you can finish off at leather ends. Um, so if you want to get more involved with the leather, you certainly can do that. And then we just snap it on. And we have a beautiful leather bracelet. So again, um, as you wear it, you can kind of see how it's going to fit. You can kind of flip things that are supposed to be flipped the other direction. If it's a little tight or fitting strange in a certain way, you can fix it from there. So that's the leather braided bracelet for today. I hope that you enjoyed the class, and I'll see you again next month for another DIY. As a special bonus project, I'm actually going to make a pair of earrings. So again, I have another piece of scrap. This is a little bit thicker than um, what I use for the bracelet. So this is going to be a good, um, a good type of thing to use for earrings. They're going to hold a little bit more. Um, I guess flat than you would if you had a like a thinner material like something like this. Um, this would actually still work. You certainly could certainly use this. Um, it just doesn't have a lot of rigidity to it, so it's gonna be a little bit more bendy. Um, these pieces here, this little um, teardrop shape, I actually came in a kit. This is actually a die cutting tool, um, so you can actually put your leather, put this right on your leather, put it through a die cutting machine, and then um, it'll make very even pieces for you. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do that because, well, not everybody has one of those, so I'm going to show you the DIY part. So I have two um, fish hook earring tops. You don't need jump rings, or excuse me, split rings on this one um, because the, uh, actually not split rings, they're jump rings. You don't need jump rings on this one because of the way that it's going to hang. So you can always see what you need. Here's the earring piece. Whoops. You want the, the piece to fit right in here. So all you're going to do is open this end, put your leather on there, and you're done. So you don't need any uh, rings on that one. So I'm actually going to flip it over. 
this piece here is very straight. I don't have any bends or any um, you know, bad things on the front, so I don't have to really worry about where I put it. There's no direction or anything on here. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze it way over on the side where I want it. And I'm going to use a Sharpie. And I'm going to trace it on the outside. Again, this is meant to be a die cutting tool, so you can actually just use this, put it into your tool piece. Uh, the library does have one, but since we're not in-house, I am not able to get it. And then this one. So leather is very expensive, so obviously you want to try and get it as far to one section as you can so you can save something like this for some other project you might need. So that looks good there. I'm holding it down very tight so that it doesn't wiggle or move. And then I'm also putting a, a little dot where the hole is that I need to cut out. So if you're going to put something on the bottom of here, there is a hole there as well, so you could cut out that bottom piece as well. So I don't need that anymore. I am going to cut them out with the scissors. You can, again, you can use whatever it is you'd like. You can use a craft knife if you wish. You do want to take your time. This leather is very thick. You can use a rotary cutter um, on a little bit more straight pieces, something with, that, with, with a ruler like you would use for regular fabric. You can use that. And I'm not trying try not to pull the fabric as I do it. You know, I'm not twisting it and yanking the fabric. I'm kind of just squeezing the scissors and then turning the leather where I need it to turn it. All right, so I don't want this top to be so pointy, so I'm just going to kind of flatten it off there. We have one beautiful earring piece there. If you want them to be perfectly the same size, you will need to use some kind of a die cutter or something to that effect. Because you know, obviously when you're, you're cutting with the scissors, you're going to have a little bit of human error or manipulation and they're not going to be exactly the same. Alright, so again I'm just going to, it's really just the tip, I'm just getting that tip off of there. There we go. So at this point, you want to go through, kind of fluff the back, and then see if you have any big hairs sticking off the back. You're going to have that anyway. I mean, so I don't worry about it too much because as you wear them, um, if you have longer hair, it's going to just kind of naturally uh, kind of fray out like that a little bit. But I'm going to cut just a couple of them off. So I'm just using my craft knife, and I'm really just cutting the hairs. I'm not cutting the front of the leather at all. I'm just lining it up, laying those little hairs flat, and kind of slicing them off. You don't even have to apply too much pressure. It's come off pretty thick. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to use my tool here. This is um, the hole making set, I guess you could call it. There's different sizes. You can see this one's very, very tiny. It's going to make a really teeny tiny hole, which is great. The next size up, you can see whichever one you want um, to work with. The next size up is just a little bit bigger. 
Um, just be aware that they do they do stretch a little bit once you put the hole in there. So I think I'm actually going to use the smallest one that they have in the set. There's a lot of different sets, obviously. This one's just a six-piece set, but uh, you, can, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at um, any store that has leather type of stuff. All right, so this is the part where you want to flip it over and look for your little hole here. You put this right over the top. And you're going to hold it straight up and down and... Do it several times, and you can see it actually is stuck in my in my board. And now I have this nice little hole. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Probably don't need to hit it nine times, but I'm going to to make sure it goes through. And now we have everything we need right there. And again, these pieces uh, go up inside there, but they'll come out this little hole once it gets full enough, so don't worry about digging those out. And then this part here, um, where did I put my pliers? Here it is. Um, you need some kind of a needle nose pliers or some kind of a jeweler's pliers. Um, it's actually rounded. You don't want to use uh, a flat one because that's just going to smush it. So don't use that. Just use the stand, this uh, rounded kind. I don't know if you can really see that it's rounded, but they make some that are even, even finer of a point than this one. Um, this is just, a, I believe it's just a needle nose one, but you can use, they do actually make jeweler's ones. So on the backs of these fish hooks, you just have to figure out which side opens. You can see it's actually not solid. It's a, it's a hook. So there's a little bit of a slice there. So what you're going to do is you're going to open that just a little bit. You're just going to pull out the end. Just enough. I need a little bit more. And you can put, you can put your, if it's small enough, you can put it in there and actually pry it open that way too. Um, and then this part that goes in your ear, so this is going to be the front. So you have to kind of figure that out as well. Put that in. And then you're just going to squeeze it back down. Now don't squeeze it, um, like just smush it flat. You don't want to do that because it's actually going to smush the hole. You're going to kind of bend it up. It does scratch a little bit, so make sure that you have it on the back. And then it's sealed. Oops. Just like that. And now we have a beautiful earring ready for use. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. Just gonna kind of pull it apart here. Again, this goes into the ear, and so this is the front side here. Leave that on the back. Kind of curl it back down. I'm not really squeezing it. I'm just kind of curling it back down. Well, there's no way there. All right, so just like that. And now we have a beautiful set of leather earrings as well. So again, you can do anything you want with these types of things. You can layer more pieces of uh, leather with different colors. So you could have that one. And then you could put this like kind of a tealy color over the top in another shape. Um, the kit, the one that I have, this kit here actually has a lot of different die cuts in it. Um, you don't have to get all of these and you certainly can just draw it on paper and then cut them out. You know, that way you don't have to have the, the die cuts. I just happen to have them. So I hope that you enjoyed this add on project as well. And I can't wait to see all of y'all walking around with leather things everywhere. Bye-bye.